box, cloud DVR storage, more local channels on every device in your home. Get more with Fiber Wire TV. Good afternoon. I'm your host, Don Burgess, for Bernie's News and Views. And today I'm rocking the paint Bermuda jersey in honor of our football team and uh, the history that they've made in qualifying for the Gold Cup. We just want to uh, say we're at the House Bermuda today and thank you to our sponsors, Butterfield and Vallis and One Communications, for sponsoring uh, Bernie's uh, Gold Cup coverage, uh, which will start today officially and run through however long the, the, the team goes. And hopefully it's past. Uh, New Jersey and uh, we'll, we'll see you guys playing a lot more than three games. Our guests today are Coach Kyle Lightborn. Glad to have you here. Thank you. John T. Smith. Thanks for having me. And Liam Evans. Thank you, thank you. Um, Kyle, you, you, we'll do first things first. You got the game against uh, Guyana tomorrow. Um, what are you looking to get out of the game um, going forward into the Gold Cup? Uh, yeah, we'll be looking for uh, to get a good quality game out of it, good minutes for for a lot of players. Unfortunately, it's only six substitutes, so some players will miss out on 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 playing. But uh, a lot of the things that were worked on, that's what I would like to see come out in the match, um, offensively and defensively. Have you decided who's going to start or what sort of plan you have for, uh, not that you can want to reveal it to Guyana beforehand, but do you have a general idea of like which? No, we're it? still toying with one or two riders, um, you know, especially with players arriving late. Um, so, you no, know, it's probably like three spots that we have to nail down today. Okay, so everyone's going to be training, training very hard. I, you know, Coach said that the training this week's uh, been pretty intense. How's it been for you guys? Well, for me, you know, we start <coughs> off the week with, uh, with fitness, which, you know, it's nice. We need to get ourselves conditioned for this game while the game's coming up. And, um, you know, even from that, training's been of a high quality and it's been really intense, which is what we need because, you know, we're going to be playing against some quality opposition. Yeah, same thing. Started off the week with some fitness testing, which is always fun. But um, even since then, I feel like every session has been at a pretty high intensity. But we've also done a good job at having the other aspect of it, with whether it's the strength and conditioning or stretching, recovery, all that stuff um, involved in it as well, so that we as players can start to recover a bit, especially in preparation for tomorrow's game. What do you, as a player, what are you looking to get out, testing yourself against Guyana, another uh, Gold Cup debutante? Uh, what, what are you, as an individual, trying to, to hope to see yourself perform? Uh, well, for myself, I think that, you know, it's a good, it's good to see the other competition that's also playing in this tournament. You know, it's our first time in this tournament and we are playing against what some people might be considering as higher opposition. And, you know, Guyana's a good footballing team. They have some professional players and, you know, it would be nice for us to compete against them and, you know, see how we do. Yeah, I've truthfully never played at any level against Guyana, but from what I've heard, there are professionals involved in their mix just like we have. And they are, I think, a little bit bigger of a nation, probably over 100,000. So I think it'll be a good test for us and clearly they did well enough to qualify as well, so I think it's it's as good of a warm up match as we can get. I mean, Burrito's only played Guyana twice before 2011 uh, World Cup qualifying run, so the, really, what happened back then eight years ago doesn't make much of a difference today. No, I think it's probably they have a total different makeup of, of team um, now, and with with the coaching staff that they have. They have the ins and outs of players that have been playing in academies and playing uh, non-league. So they've got their finger on the pulse when it comes to that because both coaches are living in England. So that, that makes it a little easier for them to, to monitor the players that they're looking out for. Now you have a relationship with because you know the coach for Guyana. Tell us a little bit how you guys met and and maybe have you guys been sharing any thoughts as you guys 
or yeah, Michael, um, Cup? Mike, Michael Johnson, I pretty much met through playing when I was playing for Walsall, um, and my captain then, Martin O'Connor, moved on to Birmingham City, which Michael Johnson played for Birmingham City, and that's when I really first got to meet him. Um, so that was through an uh, ex-captain of mine. Mm -hmm. And um, Paul Williams, who is his assistant coach, I played with at Coventry City. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Paul's a great guy. He was a, he was a good player. You know, he played many games in the Premier League. Um, so, you know, he's got the experience. He's coached at the highest level. Um, so yeah, it's going to be, should be an interesting game. Now, have you guys shared anything? Because you guys, you're on this sort of Gold Cup journey together, but you guys have separate paths that you're taking. Any, you know, sharing any camaraderie or, or thoughts about, you know, how you're approaching the, the, the rest of the tournament? Yeah, more of, uh, you know, the journeys that we've been through, the ups and downs that we have to go through, um, you know, the things that we're fighting to get, like, you know, staff-wise and little things like that that we, we talk about. Um, mm -hmm. That not not so much tactics, um, but you know, those are the things that we we have been talking about. And you know, seeing uh, Michael on a couple of occasions that uh, when I had to go for the FIFA awards, and then again in um, LA not too long ago. So. You know, we spend time together talking, mm -hmm. and and it, it's it's very interesting to see, you know, who would have thought after all those years ago that we would, you know, meet in this sort of setting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As as, a, as players, and you have somebody that's played in the Premier League, what sort of uh, inspiration does coach provide? As you know, he's been there, he's he's done that sort of thing. Uh, well, for me. You know, it's a bit more personal because he used to play striker and I am a striker. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's times in training where, you know, he might get involved a little and take a few shots <laughs> and they fly into the top corner. And I'm, I'm sitting there thinking like, you know, what a player he must mm -hmm. have been in his prime. And, you know, I try to learn from that and try to take from it. And, you know, it's beneficial for us as forwards. Uh, I don't, I can't really speak mm -hmm. for the midfielders. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, for me, me and Letty go back pretty far. He was my first coach. When I just came up in the senior football in Bermuda when I was, what, 16 um, at Robin Hood. And then from there, he also coached the under-20 team where we went to Costa Rica, obviously. Um, was that two years ago now? Um, and then to keep moving through the ranks, I mean, as my senior coach, feels like it's, it's been a long journey, but I've enjoyed all of it. Yeah. Now you captained the under twenty team when yeah. it went to Costa Rica. Yeah. So, what sort of insights do you think that you did, or that you have shared with some of the guys um, who maybe weren't a part of that team? You know what they can expect at the state at the stadium. I mean, yeah. So we played at the stadium we're playing at um, twice. I think we played Costa Rica and El Salvador there. And as a stadium, it, it's it's a big stadium. I, I know on that day it'll be pretty packed. Um, with the supporters and having played Costa Rica in that stadium, you know what that's like already. And I'm sure some of those other 20 players that were playing when we were playing have maybe some of them moved into the ranks of the full team now because they were a good side. Um, but I guess I just kind of I know what to expect when we get there and how it's how it's going to be um, and just how the grounds are and everything like that. How how noisy was it when you guys were playing those matches? Um, for an under twenty match, it was it was pretty. It's a big stadium and it has a, a track around it, so to get it to be really noisy would take a lot. But but even back then, it was it was pretty pretty good. Yeah, because I, I think the, the stadium seats about twenty five thousand people or so. so yeah, it's rough. And, and, yeah. and with Costa Rica playing playing the game afterwards, I'm sure it's yeah, going to yeah. be. <laughs> yeah, I, I I'd imagine our game's going to start with. You'll see fans coming in. I know the, the Haitians, they will be, um, you know, they support that team, Raul. And I think we're going to have some a good bit of support there as well. So it, it's it's going to be very interesting. I think, um, you know, that that's more of a, a national stadium. It's not a mm -hmm. purposely built football stadium. So, so um, 
the players are a bit away from the crowd. So and and the stadium is quite open, like either end. So the noise level is probably not as high as a purposely built football stadium. But you know the surface is a wonderful surface, and I think the players will enjoy enjoy playing in that stadium. But how many of the guys have have played in that stadium? Uh, so we have, I know as far as Liam Osaji. Uh, Jaquil, Milan, that's probably all, all the under 20 players have, that, that's on this team would have played in, in, um, in that stadium. Yeah. What sort of advantage do you think that might provide? No, I don't, it's no advantage okay. because I know guys from Haiti have been there as well. They were mm -hmm. in the same tournament. Um, Haiti's probably played against Costa Rica at senior level there. so. Um, they're, they're, they're a lot more traveled than us, so, mm -hmm. but I, I think um, Costa Rica is a wonderful place, it's a nice, nice and friendly, so mm -hmm. the players I think we'll settle in quite well. Now you guys leave on Monday? Yes. Yes. Um, so once you get there, what is, what is sort of the training plans that you have for the team? Training plans, um, we've got a lot of work to do as far as uh, protocol that needs to be done when we get there for for CONCACAF. Um, once once the players they need to get pictures taken for and for for T V purposes mm -hmm. and, and different things like that. So that's a lot of time mm -hmm. that's gonna be needed in the, in that department. And all those pesky uh, journalists are gonna be bothering. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That, that, that's, a, you know, all that time has been set aside, mm -hmm. you know, in the right time. And, um, you know, our training sessions is just a matter of um, taking over and, and keeping the boys bouncing. And, you know, we'll probably got one more hard session in there before we, we wind down and get ready for our first match. So the Tuesday, Tuesday probably be spent pretty much taking care of all the paperwork sort of things. Yeah, it's, and it's, photos and those. Yeah, um, it's one of them days. I, I don't have it on hand um, which day it is, but I know it's, it's one of them days that's going to be long and tedious for the players. <laughs> the, part of the thing, though, is like um, because it's you qualify for the tournament. Concacaf is is basically paying for things. You have to adhere to certain protocols that they demand. Yeah, it's a lot of protocols that they, they demand that. Yeah. We normally take for granted, you know, it's like not giving away where, where we're staying. Mm -hmm. um, those sort of things for us, because we're a small nation, we probably take it for granted. But when you look at teams like Mexico and USA, mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. probably, you know, they're used to not letting people know where, they, where they're mm -hmm. staying. So that's all across the board for, for the whole competition. Is that, it, is that so like the players don't get distracted, people? No, think? that's a safety issue. Safety issue. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a safety mm -hmm. issue. And um, also the travel, you know, we won't be traveling the normal way that we travel. Mm -hmm. um, CONCACAF have their own um, company that will pick us up and take us straight to the next destination. Right. That's not a, that's not out of Bermuda's pocket either because we qualify for right. it. Right. So. That's all that's part of CONCACAF. Uh, CONCACAF, we have to get to the venue, which is Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. So we'll travel our normal way to get to Costa Rica. Once we get to Costa Rica, CONCACAF takes care of all the travel until we're out of the competition. Yeah. So the travel, the hotel, do yeah. you guys get a per diem as well? or is Yeah, the players <laughs> get a per diem. No, not, 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 the, not the coaching staff, just the players. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Now, Jonathan, your dad's Clay, and and yeah. and your uncle's Wendell. You know, your your family has a long history of being cricketers. Now, I'll say this: I've seen your dad play football. He was a pretty good footballer as well. But why did you end up gravitating towards football rather than cricket? See, it's it's funny because. I can remember from about the age of five, my dad used to have me out in the yard every day 
throwing tennis balls at me saying, you know, we're going to work on this shot. We're going to play <laughs> this shot today. And, you know, I, to be honest, I used to love it. I used to love going out there every day. But, um, you know, as I got older, I was playing both sports and it got to the time where my parents basically said, you know, if you want to be a professional and, you know, try and make a career out of this, you have to choose one. And, you know, my dad probably was hoping I'd choose cricket, but at the same time, I think I was a little bit more passionate about football. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, the feeling that I used to get scoring a goal compared to the feeling where, you know, I hit a six, mm -hmm. it just, it wasn't much of a comparison for me. And so for me, just that feeling of scoring goals and being a striker, that's what drove me to end up choosing to uh, choose football over cricket. Yeah. Now you probably had the same sort of because weren't you on the um, youth Bermuda cricket team national team at one point? Yes. And yeah. so what made you can relate to his journey? Of yeah, I mean myself uh, playing cricket. You know, I've always had more love for football oh. than cricket. But deep down, I'd probably say I probably would have been a better cricketer than a footballer. Um, you know, had the opportunity at a young age to to play for ICC in Australia. Um, Dean, Dean Miners and myself, so, and I had opportunities to go and have trials with a couple of um, county clubs back then, but I wanted to play football, so <laughs> that was a decision that I made. And, you know, I like the buzz of football more than cricket. Okay. Now, Liam, did you have any Two dual sports loyalties, or is it just straight football? Um, for me, I was one of those kids that just played every sport. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't really remember a time in my life where football wasn't my number one priority. But overall, I played pretty much anything you could think of. And I played cricket as well when I was a kid, or baseball, or basketball, or whatever it was. Right, and I mean, I played those sports right up until like graduated high school. But football was the only sport I played on a serious on a serious side like outside of school or basic competitions no what are you guys looking forward to most over the course of the of the tournament i think for me well i think for a lot of us it's probably going to be our biggest experience in terms of you know as a footballing nation so far you know we still have aspirations to try and qualify for the world cup but for right now, in this moment, we want to make sure that we, you know, we take everything in and enjoy this tournament for what it is. Because mm -hmm. it's, you know, for the footballing fans that don't, I guess, know the specifics, it's our equivalent as the Euros that England and France and mm -hmm. those nations would play in. So for our region, this is our biggest tournament. And, you know, we want to experience all the press and you know, the CONCACAF taking care of things for us mm. and, you know, see what that's like and it will drive us to eventually, you know, we want to be in this competition regularly, not just once. And that was really, uh, everyone's happy, obviously, that we qualified for this tournament for the first time, but no one's really, like, resting on our laurels in, in that we don't think that we can actually advance in this tournament. Mm. I think that game against Haiti will be one of the most important matches in our country's history. And mm. if we get a result... From that, then who knows what could happen? But I've, I've seen a couple of guys because I've been reading all the predictions and the previews for a group for all the groups, but mm. particularly Group B. But like, uh, and some people actually put you guys in as a as a Cinderella to to get through the group. Um, one person even called it the group of life because um, Costa Rica is ranked third in out of the sixteen teams, and then. Nicaragua and well Haiti's 10th and Nicaragua some people put them at 13 some people put them at 14 and Bermuda at, at 15 yeah. so like it's not like unrealistic for us to to get enough points to, to advance to Houston yeah I mean you know when we step on the pitch all that goes out of the window <laughs> you know it's it's what you do on the day and um, we're going to make sure that we we try and be victorious, mm -hmm. uh, especially that first game, like like Liam just mentioned. Mm -hmm. That's our that's our cup game right there. You know, we have to be ready and prepared to go all out for it. Um, you know, when it's 
games like this, your first game is so important. Um, and then and then you can assess from from there. So yeah, the first game is a, is a very crucial. You know, I played against Haiti, I played against, uh, coached against them, and they're tough opponents. Um, so yeah, it was, it's, it's all to play for in that first game for us. Yeah. Well, I see it the, the way they have it set up is like because um, they they always try to set the last set of games as like the two teams they think are going to advance. So they've got Haiti playing Costa Rica in the last game, yes, and us playing Nicaragua. Yeah. Uh, you know, are we lucky that we didn't get uh, Costa Rica at Costa Rica, or would you 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 prefer them second in in Dallas? Uh, uh no. It, it's. I think that's in our favor a little bit because we got a chance to see them firsthand. Um, you know that that's that will help. Um, you could always have videos and and study how they play, but it's on the day, so you can see it live and um, so that that will have an effect on us to to a bit to a degree. And yeah, Concacaf they're they're probably set it up like that and you know hoping that the game between Haiti and uh, Costa Rica Costa Rica you know that that's that's going to be the the game that decides you know everything for that group but we'll see yeah. uh, although I've seen some predictions on the other end where somebody actually said what, what Liam said oh bring is just happy to be there but yeah, you know, so I find that a bit insulting yeah, no, it's not a chance. You know, we, we are happy that we are there, but we're not going there just to be a part of it. You to know, get a participant rhythm. Really. Exactly. Like we're, we're there to play, we're there to compete. And, you know, if any team does take us lightly because we are just, you know, Bermuda, a small island, then they have another thing coming. The, I, one of the, I guess one of the benefits of having the double headers is like, are the, after you guys, finish up your game and you've had your little talk is the expectation that everyone's going to be watching the next game just to, to get an idea of the other two teams um yes I think you know going off of how games were in the in the under 20s mm -hmm. when we were in Costa Rica was a similar setup but it's a fast turnaround so things have to be done you know really quick for for um after the match in order for us to catch part of the game because we could come out of the change room and the game could be 20 minutes into into play so I mean meaning the next match so things have to be done really fast and we'd have our people in place to to watch from the beginning beginning of the match now uh, Dennis if you can just roll the the team uh, you had to narrow it down from 40 players to 23 as, as a head coach. How difficult was that compared to other, other times, knowing what's at stake? Yeah, for myself personally as a coach, that's something that I really don't look forward to. You know, um, players that have worked hard to, to get to, to this stage and then they're being left out. Um, you know, so that, that's something that I really don't like. and. I always think of those players that are not there because one day we're going to need them. Um, so there's no hard feelings behind that. Players take it in many different ways. You know, some players they take it that oh the coaches don't like us, and some players take it and feel like I gotta work on, you know, gotta be better in every department. So you know, it's a growing process for for the whole nation, really. As a as a player, you're waiting the the announcement that whether or not you made the team. How nerve wracking is that? Uh, well, you know it is it is a stressful time because everyone wants to play in this tournament. You know, everyone wants to be a part of it. But um, you know, if I if I wasn't selected, then all all I would think to myself is that you know, okay, I'm not I'm not involved in this tournament. But you know, we have Mexico and Panama coming up in Nations League shortly after it so let me make sure I'm doing everything I can to be in the team next time because those are also very big games for our country. 
yeah, it's definitely a, a weary time for us as players. You're just thinking about everything that happened in the past weeks of training, which you could have done better, which you, which you may, might not have done as well. But at the end of the day, it's not really in your hands. It's you just got to let it come and hope for the best. And if, like you said, if you didn't make it, there's so much football going on right now that I don't think that the team will be set for any amount of time after this. Like there's so much interchangeability that could happen um, between the players and I'm just excited to see what happens going forward. Yeah. William White seemed, to, you know, he was disappointed that he didn't make the team, but he seemed like he was gracious to everybody else on his social media post, to, you know, encouraging everybody to rooting for the best for us. Yes, um, William's one of the players that, that, you know, let his feelings be known how he really felt about not being selected, which is fine. We, we, you know, we have to deal with that. That's mm -hmm. part of the game. Um, and, you know, William's turn will come. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just have to, you know, stay strong as a unit, um, you know, because you never know what's around the corner. Um, with the national program now, or the, or the, especially the seniors, when we get together, it's always for something that has a meaning behind it now. There's no, uh, we're getting together, we're just training for, for the sake of training. We're training with, for, with something at, at the end of the tunnel. Right. You know, so that makes a big difference for, for all the players. You know, the players that are in the 23 and the players that are in the 40 and the players that are thinking, yeah, I want to be a part of that. that that's something for any player to to work hard enough to be involved. Is it sort of motivating now that, you know, even though th this part of the Gold Cup, you know, has been selected and these are the 23, you still have the Nations League coming up and you've got two games against Panama, two games against Mexico, one each here at home, you know, for the, for the players to keep working hard and keep striving to make it back into the squad. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing. You have to... You know, like I said, you never know what's around the corner. You know, players get injured, players lose form, players find form. That all these different things take a part. You have players that that catch your eye, and um, you know you want them to be involved. And from a coaching standpoint, we want our best players to be involved. We want to be able to be in a position to be able to to make a rough decision on a player that's at the top of his game or three or four players that are at the top of their game. You know, that, that's what it's about, you know, making them tough decisions. And in the end, we all hope that it works out and we get it right. We're going to take a 15 second uh, commercial break and be right back. For Get Ready Box, Cloud DDR Storage, more local channels on every device in your home. Get more with FiberWire TV. We haven't talked much about, you know, Maria's going to get to see Mexico here. You know, <laughs> what, <laughs> we haven't, it's been a long time since Maria's played Mexico. Um, uh, one of the other benefits of qualifying um, uh, to have them on home soil. What's it going to be, what do you think it's going to be like to having both Mexico and Panama at, at our national stadium? I, I think they they need to start bringing in more stands for their games <laughs> now. <laughs> um, no, um, really, the Mexico game is is something that will be a great experience for us, us players and and what and the in Bermuda. We haven't seen anything like that in years, so. It's going to be a great opportunity to have a team that's been in the World Cup for year in, year, year, year out. Mm -hmm. Great opportunity for us. This is an opportunity for us to grow as a as a, a footballing country to play against these teams, learn, and and um, keep growing. That this is what it's about for us. Keep growing. What do you think it's going to be? You know, we're, we're, and we're now getting to the point where we're playing high quality teams on a regular basis. Because one of the complaints about football over the years, we have a tournament, we don't qualify, the, we don't play any games for a couple of years. We have another tournament, we play a few games, and then 
we don't qualify. We don't having the the, the nations league where we're going to be getting regular quality opponents. How do you think it's going to help local football? That should help us in the long run. You know, just think of this in ten years' time. Uh, the constant uh, games that we will be playing at at the at the highest level. So players will get used to it. The association will be used to it. Um, you know, everything. Long long as it's it's growing, and we should be improving. That's that's ultimately everybody wants to improve. Everybody wants to do well. So also when we're not doing well on the field, we have to stick together, we have to stay strong. And, you know, it's all a part of growing. You have your setbacks, you have to deal with them in the right way and, um, and just move on. I, I can understand why CONCACAF wants to do it because, you know, we get three and a half slots for the World Cup and in order for our region to get more, the teams have to have, be playing on a regular basis to say, hey, we don't want to be the neglected region. We, you know, we, we deserve more 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 slots in the, in, the, in the World Cup. Yeah, I mean, I've had a couple of interviews with the CONCACAF people, and the first thing they ask, like, how does Bermuda get to this point? And um, a lot of it has to do with relationships for years going by. Like, um, all the players that are here, we know the players. Not only do we know the players, we know the parents. <laughs> we we know their backgrounds. So that that's a big, big component for 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 us. Um, it's a lot of countries that, you know, they have players that are that they just have um, family or the grandparents or maybe the father was born in that country or the mother, and that's their ties that allows them to play for that country. Bermuda is a little different. It's very difficult to get a Bermuda passport, you know. Okay. So, and that's that's what allows you to play for countries, your passport. And um, so, we know all the players that we're dealing with. We know their backgrounds. We know um, the clubs that they play for as youngsters, and and all of that. So, it's you know we have an advantage in that department. Right. Now, in two years' time, the Gold Cup is going to be used as part of the qualifying for the World Cup. And knowing that we're 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 playing it at this time, one is one of sixteen teams. How exciting is that for you guys to think? Okay, we should want to qualify again because I want to get to the World Cup as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, when we when we set out this vision uh, at the start of the Nations League tournament. We, we started off saying, you know, we want to make sure that we're in League A. And, you know, once we achieved that, we said, you know what, we're not going to stop here. We want to qualify for the World Cup next. And, you know, it's always been a vision of ours. You know, if you don't dream big and you don't push yourself to your limit to try and be everything you can be, then why are you playing? You know, we, we don't want to stop where we are. Yeah, it seems like just yesterday we were in the hotel in Florida right before the Aruba game, just talking about everything. We had a big presentation about our vision for the next few years and obviously our immediate priority was Nations League A and the Gold Cup and we've achieved that. So now it's like, well, why can't we just keep keep moving forward, keep growing? Because anything's possible, honestly. I mean, and, and if we're all being honest, the Aruba game was a letdown. I mean, that's the low point of the, of this journey. Um, how did you guys refocus after that to, to turn things around and, and reel off three wins? Well, you know, we, we realized that we underperformed in that game. And, you know, for us, if we, if we wanted to achieve what we set out, we knew that we had to up our standard in everything that we do. You know, starting from the smallest things in terms of, you know, just making sure we stay off our feet or get enough rest yeah. and, you know, making sure we're hydrated. And, you know, we we had to up our standard and everything to make sure that we improved for the next game. And, you know, we we got the results and we said, OK, you know, we're, we have points on the board and we can now go into the next game, which was El Salvador at that point, mm -hmm. knowing that we needed a result. And, you know, we gave everything we have and that's what we're going to continue to do. Yeah, I, 
I don't want to say we took the Aruba game lightly, but out of the four matches, the Aruba game and the St. Martin game were supposed to be two winnable matches for us, or very winnable matches for us. And then after kind of a shock with the Aruba result and how that game went down, it was like we had to take a step back and reassess everything. And this, that wasn't how we were going to get to where we wanted to get to. And I think it was good that we ended up playing St. Martin after because we weren't going to take them lightly, no matter what everyone was saying. And clearly we, we didn't really let off the pedal with that game. And that gave us the confidence going into the our two arguably tough, tougher matches. And nobody likes to, to lose a game, especially in an international competition. But how were the lessons from Aruba applied to help make the team better? Yeah, I think a couple of things changed from Aruba. Um, I just felt that the balance in the team wasn't quite right. Like the Aruba game, we had right footers playing on the left hand side. Like it, it just everything, and when you look back at that game, just didn't go right on the field on that day. Um, we let in early goals. All, all the things that you think of, you know, we let in a goal after getting back in the game. Um, to make it 2-1, then we let in a goal early in the second half. So it's, you know, all those sort of things just run against us. And, and that can happen in football. Um, we just made sure that it didn't happen again because we couldn't afford to, um, you know. And, and I think as the tournament went on and everybody sees the importance of us doing well, you know, um, th this allows us to build, like you said earlier about this allows us to stay in competitions. You know, if we didn't finish in the top 10 of, of, of the Nations League, then we'll be watching it on TV. So this allows us to continue playing and growing. Right. After the Dominican Republic game, what was your guys' reaction when you knew that Bermuda had qualified for the Gold Cup? See, <laughs> that's, a, that's a tough question because, you know, we, it took a while for it to sink in uh, with what we accomplished. And, you know, everyone saw the celebrations after, but I think there was, there was a collective moment in the group of players where we were, we had to sit back and look like, you know, we did it. We actually made it and, you know, it was what we set out to achieve and just getting there alone is, you know, one of the high points in my life and I'm sure it is for a lot of other players. Yeah, just to piggyback off that, like, it was, it didn't seem real during the time. Even when we're celebrating on the field it, and there was Bermudian fans there, obviously, <laughs> It was great, but it, it, it hadn't quite sunk in yet. And then even so until almost the draw, like the, the time period between us qualifying and, and the final draw for the Gold Cup felt like forever. But once, once that came in, it was like we had, we had our dates, we had our games, we knew exactly what to expect and we just had to go. Dennis is going to bring up the, uh, the draw the, the, when you guys are playing which teams. Mm -hmm. um, watching the draw, what was your anticipation were you were you hoping to maybe get a certain team or were you looking or hoping to avoid a team or just what, what was that like watching well, it live well for me personally I was hoping that we would draw USA <laughs> just for firstly you know the experience of playing a host nation in in their country is you know it's an it's an experience of a lifetime mm -hmm. And at the same time, I still feel like, you know, we could go there and shock people and get a result against arguably the biggest nation in the, in the competition. <laughs> For me, I, w I was sitting in my apartment with my laptop up in the, um, the draw, and one of my um, friends who also lives in the same complex is actually, he's from Costa Rica, and we were just watching together, and I... It was like, <laughs> if this happens, this will be crazy because he's actually will be there um, when we're playing and, and his family. And literally, as soon as it happened, he got a call from his uncle saying they had secured tickets and like Costa Rica is kind of trying to make this a big thing for them and them hosting and almost declaring it a national holiday. So I'm sure the stadium will be 
quite full no matter what game it is even though we don't play costa rica there but that was that was a surreal moment for me <laughs> well hopefully you can get him some bermuda jerseys for him. yeah I, I told him i'd try and bring one down for him. And get, maybe get the costa rica crowd behind <laughs> behind bermuda for for, for the first for the first game <laughs> now you were you were live at the at the when they were doing the draw and something that's really hasn't happened for bermuda in, in football what was it like being in that atmosphere and you know, you know, it has all the glitz and the glamour that's going on, and you're just sitting in the audience, and then you get brought up on national TV to for an interview. Yeah, it, it just takes me back to from my playing days. You know, being in the media and being being on this, in the spotlight. That sort of those moments take me back to you know walking into a wonderful stadium. Everything was there for for you, whatever you needed. Um, you know, you were well taken care of, and it just shows you the level that that um, <laughs> the competition. You know, and and how Concacaf want to really up everything in this area as far as the the quality of it. So, you know, it was it was it was a real good moment for for the country to be involved in that you know so it's i think it's, it's a lot of exciting moments <laughs> going forward for sure that the players are gonna gonna really when they look back at it in 10 years time and be able to see what they really have accomplished what, what do you think is the the challenge because we've got three games over eight days in three different cities I mean, before you, you've played games like two or three days apart, but you, you're not traveling anywhere. You're just you're in one location. But here, uh, uh, now you don't have to worry about the you know all the travel arrangements because somebody else is doing that. But like, what are the challenges in moving from city to city? Because you're in Costa Rica, San Jose, Costa Rica, on the 16th, and then basically Dallas, Texas, on the 20th, and then Newark or New York. Uh, yeah, I mean, the way they have it set up, we leave the next day like two, three o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. not like we have to wake up early the day after the match. Mm -hmm. It allows us to, to do a session the day after the match and then, you know, travel uh, later in that afternoon. Mm -hmm. So everything is set up and it's going to be a lot stress-free as far as the travel. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll get to the next um, place where we're where we're playing, so we'll get to Dallas the day after our match, and um, you know we would have already had a session after the match, mm -hmm. and then we, we we should move smoothly on, you know, the way it's set up. You know, I guess you always have hiccups along the way, and um, yeah, we're looking forward to it. Now, do you guys have family coming to any of the games? Yeah, I have. Uh, well, I know that my family will be there for the game that's in New Jersey. Yeah, I, I think like everyone's <laughs> expecting that that game's going to be jammed. Yeah, yeah. People might do a little shopping on the sideline as well. <laughs> but um, I, I do have some people from England coming to the Costa Rica and the Texas game as well. Yep. Yeah, the same. New Jersey is pretty pretty booked up, and then obviously Costa Rica. I know some people and. Texas, I think just a couple college friends are kind of take the flight down, stay there a couple of days. So, looking forward to it. <laughs> now, I'll put in a plug for the BFA right here. Is like, because up at the office, um, they're selling tickets for the games. You can get, and they, they have a little chart, and you can see where the Bermuda fans are going to be in the, in the stadium. So, you, if you're interested in going to the games, you can go up to the BFA office and. Uh, Purchase your tickets and support our team. Uh, they'll be ha they'll be happy to, to, to see you there. And of course, you can wear pink or the blue jersey. <laughs> if, if you're if you're if you're safe in your masculinity, you can wear the <laughs> wear the pink jersey like the like the guys do. Oh. Now, when the pink jersey was uh, first brought out, what was your guys' reaction? Uh, for me, for me, I liked it. You uh -huh. know, I think I think it speaks to the. It speaks as us as a nation in the terms of, you know, Bermuda's a very colorful place. Mm -hmm. You know, nowhere else in the world can you take in a view and see, you know, a red house, yellow house, blue house, and 
you know, something that stands out like that, I thought that, you know, represented us as a country quite well. Right. I mean, it's a very distinctive kit. I mean, I don't, I don't know if there's any other country that wears pink, but it, it, a very standout out is, 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 you know, oh, that's Bermuda. Yeah, I think um, with all our teams, the cricket teams, you know, we're wearing pink, you know, football team, running, all of them. So it just makes sense in the end that we all, you know, have to change over to it. So no problem for me. I, I don't have a problem with it. Well, some conspiracy theorists think that, you know, it was a, a St. George's fan didn't want us wearing red and blue all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand that, you know. Um, but no, it's, yeah, I think the players enjoy it, you know. Mm -hmm. Those that are probably not fans of it, they're probably fans of it now, you know, mm -hmm. in the beginning, so, yeah. Which of the three stadiums are you looking most to, to play in? Not necessarily the opponent, but the stadium. Uh, that's a tough question. And for me, I'm going to say the New York Red Bull Stadium. Okay. Just because, you know, we're, we're expecting quite a lot of Bermudians to travel. Mm -hmm. um, and I think mm -hmm. that game could be a massive deciding, you know, whether or not we progress through the group or not. And to have that much home support that we're anticipating coming. At an event like that, it's it's going to be an experience to remember. Yeah, because I, well, I know when I was up at the BFA office earlier this week, I saw saw like they've been crossing off where people bought tickets, tickets yeah. and and the New York game or Newark game is is the one that's got the most tickets sold. So like everyone's expecting that to be a huge crowd. Liam, S same exact reasons. <laughs> Obviously, I've played in Costa Rica Stadium already, and I'm excited to see on the stadium in Dallas. But I don't think. <laughs> there's going to be anything like what New York will have. How, you know, a lot of times in sports they talk about having the 12th man or, or, or you know, in this case, how important is the crowd going to be for that, for that last game? Ah, the, the crowd is important. You know, when we think back to the game uh, in Dominican Republic, our fans were amazing. You know, they cheered us on, you know, after getting a goal behind and, um, you know, we want more of that. You know, we want our fans to be you know, just like it's a Bermuda day for us. Mm -hmm. You know, just think of cop match. Just think of all those moments that we have here in the island. Let them enjoy themselves in the, in the stands. You know, other countries do it. Just free up and enjoy it. So this is what it's about. Mm -hmm. One of the things I was really, really pleased with Bermuda football over the last few years is like, up until I think it was 2017, Bermuda had never won an A-level match where they trailed or were tied at halftime, and then that, that switched two years ago. Has there been a mentality switch, or you think the you know we believe in each other is like, or that's a fact that nobody really knows, and I don't know why it didn't happen before. No, I think it's just come to playing more matches. You know, it's it's something that. We've been able to build, you know, I think when you look at, when I could look at from when I coached the national team uh, before to now, it, it's so much things that are different, you know. Um, I think the players are used to coming to training. They know what to expect now, um, whereas, you know, years ago and the lack of competitions mm -hmm. that we have, regardless of who who's in charge. But when you don't have competitions that are very meaningful, then you know it makes it difficult to to prepare the team. So you just find that you're training for the sake of training and not having a real AM product to it. Whereas now it's it's an AM product to it. It's a lot more thought that goes into it from from the coaching staff and all the people that do the work behind the scenes. Right. And, and, and you know, like, because now the new structure set up, you know, we've got Mexico and Panama now, next year it's going to be two other teams in whatever division we're at, hopefully eight of it. Yeah. Concaf, Nations League so that's, it, that's the next thing, yeah. you know, we have to fight to stay in, in, in League A. Yeah. You know, so that's what, that's what it's about, you know. Um, 
it's going to be difficult. We know we're going to have our backs up against the wall at the time, but let's see if we could come out the other end. Now, Jante, the Bermuda team now has a lot more professionals than it used to back in the day. Um, what, what sort of things do you think, like having been away and, and played for professionally, you can bring back to the team? Uh, well, I, I always value my level of professionalism, you know, within myself, making sure that I do the right things, you know, at the right time, make sure I prepare for training well, prepare for match as well. And I think that, you know, I and along with a few other professionals that have joined the squad, I think that sort of filtered on to, you know, the rest of the players as well. Mm. Liam, having a lot of professionals on the team, Oh, it's, it's a great help. I mean, just in the way they conduct themselves and how they are every training for guys that either play locally or played in college or whatever it may be, it's just having almost a, an extra step up that you were trying to be like them and play up to their level and just having them there is, and their experience in, in general is good for the team, I think. As a coach, yeah, we, we want to raise the bar in every department, you know. Um, the players have demands, the coaches have demands. So we want to all meet right in the middle. So it's, you know, it's going to make it better in the long run. I, I definitely believe in that. Um, who I was involved in the BFA, you know, I think it's good times ahead. We just have to be patient. You know we're going to have setbacks along the way, but hey, that's a part of sports. You can't have it all your own way, but you have to work hard. You have to keep doing things that you know you believe in, and, and you get the results in the end. Yeah, well, it's sort of like you talk about setbacks, but it's sort of like the Ruba game was a setback, but the team learned from it. So that, um, I guess that's part of the process. If, you know, if you do have a setback, it's a stepping stone to, to go further. Yeah, I mean, it's like what we talked about in the end, we, we, we got a fifth place spot because of our, really our result against uh, St. Martin winning, you know, what was it? 12-0. Uh, 12 12-0. Um, and that put us in a good position. You know, so when I look at, when you go down, going back to our win in um, uh, to for us to qualify that was in uh, Dominican Republic. So leading up to that, from the coach's standpoint, and even probably the players looked at it, where we were in sixth spot and we dropped on seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. I think because our game was one of the last, last games, ones, yeah. so we were probably in twelfth. Probably the furthest 12th or 13th where we, we drop right down. On the bubble. Yeah, so it's, you know, we're outside looking in, and especially the El Salvador result against Jamaica, and, and Jamaica had a chance of winning the whole, um, you know, coming first in, right. in the Nations League. With them losing, we jump, ab and us winning, we jump above Jamaica, you know, so it's, 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 it, it's, it was an amazing time for that, you know, to, to go through all of that from a, from a coach's standpoint, you know, um, and to, con to sort of hurl your composer and all of that that has to go, go in there was a real surreal moment for, I think, everyone that was involved. Well, as usual with, the, with these things, hours passed by quickly. Yeah. Um, just want to give you guys a chance to have a, a last thought or saying to, to the Bermuda public. Let's start with Liam. Just to say thank you for, for everything. Thank you for the support. And we're going to go out there and try and make you guys proud. Um, for me, I guess, my message is for the younger viewers. And the reason I'm saying that is that, you know, when I was growing up, I used to always go to the national team games and I used to always... Oh you know, aspire to be a part of the national team. And, you know, we're at a point where we're playing against World Cup nations. And, you know, that wasn't always a common thing. So, you know, for the young players out there who are trying to, you know, be better at football and, and improve, you know, it's a, it's a great sight to see. And it's something that they can aspire to do as well.
Okay. Coach? Yes, and um, I would like to say we would like to continue all the good support that we're getting from everyone. Um, you know, just be with us through our ups and downs. And I think in the end, uh, we should come out on, on the right side. So continue supporting us. And this is just the beginning of the journey. Right. I, I want to thank our guests today, Liam Evans, midfielder, Jante Smith, forward, Thanks. Coach Kyle Lightborn, and uh, Bert, Bert News will be, uh, I, me personally, for Bert News, will be down in uh, Costa Rica and Dallas and, and Jersey following you guys, cheering you on, supporting you, and hoping the, the rest of the crowd will uh, be supporting you as well and trying to encourage national pride. Yeah. Uh, I'm your host uh, today, Don Burgess, and uh, we want to thank our sponsors for the Gold Cup coverage, which is Butterfield and Vallis and One Communications. Without all of this, uh, wouldn't it be possible. Uh, we are here at the House Bermuda, and as always, I hope you have a Bermudaful afternoon. For Get Ready Box, Cloud DDR Storage, more local channels on every device in your home. Get more with Fiber Wire TV.